You're watching Coda and the short series on domain modeling with Haskell. In this episode, we will lay the foundation using basic data structures in Haskell. We will model a basic project management system. This episode lays the foundation on which we will refactor and evolve later on. The project module will hold our core data structures. We need to enable the generalized new type deriving for new types. We say that this is the project module and we import the text type. We'll be working with money, so we create a new type around a double. We call the field unmoney to be able to unwrap it. We derive instances for show, eek, and num. The same goes for our project ID type. It's a new type wrapper around an int. And it also derives show, eek, and num. The central data type in this system is the project, which is either a single project with an ID and name, or a project group, which has a name and a list of subprojects. This type also derives show and eek. The budget data type holds two fields the income and the expenditure of the budget. A transaction is a very simplified model, which is either a sale of some money or a purchase of some money. Let's format and save this file. Let's open up the demo module. I'm using this for imports in the REPL, so I'll turn off the warning about unused imports. Also, we need to overload a strings language extension. Now we'll import our project module and start writing some data based on our data structures. Some project is a project defined as a group called Sweden, which has three subprojects, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malmo. The domain model is very generic so far, and here I'm using it to model something location-based in Sweden, like uh, construction sites or something. Okay, we now have some data. We can try it out in the REPL. We'll uh, simply evaluate the SUM project and see what it is. Yeah, it works. But now the customer wants some reporting based on this. We'll create a new module called database, where we will implement some fake queries to work with. In a real system, these would likely be database queries. To generate some fake data, we'll use the system random module. We'll also need our project module, and then we can start writing a query for budgets. It will be a function from project ID to an IO action of budget. Ignoring that project ID and simply generating some money within the range of 0 and 10,000. The same goes for expenditure. And then we will construct a budget value. The next query is get transactions from project ID to an IO action of a list of transactions. It also ignores its argument and constructs random data. A sale of some money within the range of zero and four thousand. The same goes for a purchase. Then we return the sale and the purchase in a list. We can now go ahead and implement our reporting module. We'll import the getSum function from data monoid 
and we'll import our own modules database qualified as db and project. A report is a data structure of three fields. The budgeted profit, the actual net profit, and the difference between the two. We create a pure function called calculate report from budget to list of transactions to report. It takes a budget and the transactions and creates a report value. We will reuse some of these values, so I'll create prime named versions of them in a where block below. But the difference is calculated from the net profit prime and the budget profit prime. The budget profit is defined as the difference between the budgeted income and the budgeted expenditure. The net profit is defined as the sum of the profit of all transactions. A sales transaction is considered a profit and a purchase is negated. We'll now use our fake DB queries to calculate a report for a project. It's a function from project to an IO action of a report. It's defined with the calc function, which, given a single project, will use our pure calculate report function over the results of the get budget and get transaction queries. Given a project group, it will fold over the projects using the calc function. For this to work, we need a monoid instance for report to be able to concatenate them. The empty element is a report with zero for all the fields. The mappend implementation will take the budgeted profit, the net profit, and the difference and sum them up. Let's go back to the demo module and try this out in the REPL. We import the reporting module and open the REPL. Given that we have a project, we can calculate a project report. There we go, nice. But we would like to format this a bit nicer. We create a new module called Pretty Print. Inside a Pretty Print module, we'll need some imports the text module, the data tree module to visualize our data structure, and printf. We also need our project and reporting modules. Now we can write as tree, a function from project to a tree with string labels. We pattern match on the project, and given a single project, we will create a graph node where the label is produced by printf using the project ID and the name. And if we have a group of projects, we will create a node where the label is the name and the list of children is the mapping of astree over projects. The pretty project function is a little helper, which is just the composition of draw tree from data tree and our astree function. Pretty report is a function from a report to a string. It's defined using printf. Creating a string with the budget, the net profit, and the difference. We need to pick out the double values from the money for all three fields. Going back to the demo module, we can import our pretty print module 
and load this up in the REPL. We can print the pretty version of a project, like so, and we can calculate the project report and print that using the pretty report function. And that is it for this episode on domain modeling with Haskell. In the next episode, we will see how we can generalize this using functor, traversable, and foldable.